Which has more thermal energy, an iceberg or a cup of hot coffee? What would your answer be? In many cases, the first answer that comes to mind when asked this question is that the cup of coffee is obviously going to have more thermal energy than a massive iceberg. Are we talking about thermal energy or temperature? How do we define thermal energy versus temperature? Let's find out. In the English language, the common terms thermal energy, heat, and temperature are often used interchangeably. Although they are closely related terms, they each have different meanings and are measured in different units. What are those differences? Thermal energy is the total amount of kinetic energy of the molecules in a system or an area. Being the total amount of energy in the system or area, thermal energy is impacted by size and mass. The base unit for thermal energy is the joule. Temperature, on the other hand, is measured in degrees Fahrenheit or degrees Celsius. Temperature is the average kinetic energy of a substance or a system. Since it is the average kinetic energy, it is not impacted by size and mass. Does this info change your answer? Let's look at the subtle differences between thermal energy and temperature. Let's start by comparing one cup of coffee to two cups of coffee. What doubled, temperature or thermal energy? Remember, temperature measures the average kinetic energy. Two cups of coffee will not have double the temperature of one cup of coffee, but two cups will have double the thermal energy than one cup because the mass or size has doubled. Now what about the one cup of coffee versus the iceberg? Remember that all substances above absolute zero, that is, zero degrees Kelvin, have molecular energy. Let's assume the iceberg in this example is at the freezing point of water, zero degrees Celsius, which equals approximately 270 degrees Kelvin, or 270 degrees above absolute zero. The coffee is likely to be in and around 75 degrees Celsius, which is 350 degrees Kelvin. While there may not be a huge temperature difference between the two in direct comparison of temperature, the iceberg is several thousand times larger than the cup of coffee. Even though the iceberg is at a lower temperature than the coffee, it contains more thermal energy because it is not at absolute zero and its mass is much greater than the cup of coffee. Therefore, the answer to the question, which has more thermal energy, an iceberg or a cup of hot coffee, is the iceberg due to its mass. Now, let's consider this situation. If we pour the cup of hot coffee onto the iceberg, does the coffee warm up its area of contact with the iceberg, or does the iceberg cool off the hot coffee? To answer this question, we need to understand the term heat energy. Heat energy is the measurement of energy in transit between a system or area with higher kinetic energy and one of lower kinetic energy. As a unit of energy, the base unit for heat is the joule. Heat energy always moves from the system with the higher kinetic energy to the one with the lower kinetic energy. In the case of the coffee that is poured onto the iceberg, the molecules in the coffee are moving faster due to their temperature. As these faster molecules bombard the slower moving molecules in the iceberg, their energy will transfer until a point of equilibrium is reached and the temperatures of the iceberg and the coffee balance out at the same reading. In this example, the sheer mass of the iceberg will not be warmed by the energy transfer from a single cup of coffee due to their extreme differences in area and mass. But if I was to pour the coffee over ice cubes, the same transfer of energy would occur with the faster molecules of the coffee transferring their energy to the slower moving molecules in the ice cubes. As the molecules in the ice cubes speed up with their newfound energy, the molecules in the coffee will slow down as the energy is transferred to the ice cubes. At some point, the speeding molecules of the ice and the slowing molecules of the coffee will reach equilibrium and the transfer of energy will stop. In addition to the influence of differences in temperature, heat transfer from one object to another is impacted by the chemical and physical properties of the substances involved. In order to better demonstrate this concept, consider a block of solid aluminum, for example, placed next to a book of equal size at room temperature, 21 degrees Celsius, 72 degrees Fahrenheit. As heat transfer occurs between the air in the room and these two substances, they will eventually all reach the same temperature. This can be verified by using an IR thermometer to confirm that all substances are the same temperature. 
Imagine holding the paperback book in one hand and the aluminum block in the other hand. Which one is cooler? Initially, you would most likely believe that the aluminum block is cooler than the paperback book as it feels colder to touch. However, both of these materials are the same temperature as verified by the thermometer. Then, what is causing the aluminum to feel cooler than the paperback book? It is the conductive properties of the two items. The aluminum is a better conductor than the paperback book. Therefore, it will transfer heat energy away from your skin faster. Remember, heat energy moves from the warmer of the two objects to the cooler. In both of these cases, your hand is the warmer object in comparison to the aluminum block and the paperback book. The thermal energy will move from your bare hand to the object. The rate that this occurs is faster in the aluminum block than the paperback book. This process produces the sensation that the aluminum block is actually at a lower temperature than the book, which is not the case. For the layperson, English jargon and the use of it in common speech will continue to impact our level of understanding when it comes to physics and chemistry. Temperature, thermal energy, and heat energy have very specific meanings. Take the time to understand these fundamental terms so that larger concepts are not lost in the translation.